Good morning, everybody, and welcome. This is Alexandre Masrak, and it's my pleasure to welcome you today on this YouTube channel. I will be your guide for the exploration of one of my favorite Oroco card deck, which is the Petit Le Normand. We will have a close look at each of the 36 cards as well as their meaning. We are going to study the uh, multiple layer of meaning one card can have. And like learning a foreign language, we are going to start from the basics. And then we will move on to more uh, complex exercise in the forthcoming series. So, um, Le Normand is very rich and it's a beautiful language. It's one of my favorite Oroco card system because uh, it has a blunt voice, it is always to the point and you can give very quick and a very accurate reading when you actually can uh, master the deck, okay? So know that there is no silly question, no too big, no too small question for the Oracle to reply and uh, please always trust what you get at first sight. We start with the first card. The first card is the Rider, okay? So the Rider is a neutral card, which, which means that the other card is going to influence his presence in the game. Uh, the keywords and basic meaning for the Rider is news, a delivery, a visit, a young person, someone who is athletic, someone with great speed and agility, someone who is always on the move. As an object, the rider can represent a horse. Uh, the rider is also represented by the Nine of Heart. The Nine of Heart is a very positive card in a French card romance, and it is also known as the Wish card. So always look what, surround, what surrounds the rider when you're when you're giving uh, a reading, for instance, the rider with the ship will tell you that you are going to receive a visit from someone who is a foreigner or someone who lives from abroad. The rider with uh, a letter will represent your postman coming forward with some uh, bills, with some news, with some uh, correspondence. The rider with the bear can tell you that uh, you're going to receive some news concerning the uh, uh, material, concerning the money, concerning investment. The second card is the clover. And as we all know, the clover has long been uh, seen as a symbol of good luck. And in the Le Normand Oracle, it is the same. So the clover is about luck, little luck, about nice surprises, about new opportunity, about small pleasures, enjoyment, happiness, good fortune, money gain for gambling, and also something which is green. Okay, green rays will be seen through um, the clover. Some example of combination is clover with bear is a money gain for gambling. Clover with letter is a lucky a message or lucky news. The clover with the birds is uh, a lucky conversation. And the clover with the moon is, you know, your luck is expanding, your luck is growing. And perhaps the full moon will be a good time for you to attract luck into your life. Card number three is the ship. The ship is a neutral card and it talks about travel, about foreigners and foreign places, about body of waters, about import, export, trade, and sometimes uh, it can talk about inheritance. So if you are asking a question about your, uh, your uh, next travel, you will look at the ship and what card is surrounded by the ship, surround the ship. If you want to know about your car, actually your car will be represented by the ship, which is uh, a mean of locomotion, a way for you to move from one place to another. 
Some example of combination can be letter with ship can be uh, news coming from far or from foreign countries. The ship and the house can mean that you are moving to a new location or you're returning back to your house, to your home, to your homeland. Uh, the ship and the tree can also mean that you're traveling uh, for your health or you're traveling to some, you know, ancestral uh, place or where your family or your roots are. Card number four is the house and the house brings, you know, a sense of security. It is the home in all sense of the word. Uh, the house is a neutral card, meaning again that it is influenced, colored by the cards, the cards surrounding it. The house stands also for real estate, for um, a father figure, because we look at the playing card insert, and here we meet the king of heart. And the king of, of heart is a loving partner, uh, a loving father, someone with whom you feel as safe and secure. So if you want to look at what is happening in the environment of your home, you will look at the house and have a close look at the card that surrounds it. For instance, the house with the store is telling me that you are going to move from this house. The house with the garden is telling me that a happy event is coming where family is going to be together with, an, with a sort of gathering and it can be, you know, like uh, many people meeting for uh, a family reunion. But the house is very good when you need security, when you need comfort, and when you need to be uh, in a safe place. Another neutral card is card number five, the tree. The tree talks about your health in general, okay? Uh, it is a card that talks about uh, how your health is going. It also talks about growth, about lineage, about geology, and about the roots, where you come from. Uh, in French technique, the closest the tree is to the card of the signifi signifier, the 28 or the 29, the more the person will be facing some trouble with his health. And if the card of the tree is surrounded by all the cards that have trees on them, like the garden, for instance, this is a sign that this person is going to live long and he is going to enjoy a strong and long-lasting health. A combination for tree will be Tree with rider is news concerning health. Um, fox with tree can be visiting a doctor or practitioner. The tree and the snake could be uh, attracting a sort of virus, a sort of bacteria. And a last one, the whip and the tree can show that you are always having trouble again and again with a certain persistent health issue. So here we meet the card number six, which is the clouds. And trust me, this is one of the cards that you won't like to see in your game. It's one of the first negative cards in this deck. And uh, it's actually when he appear in your game, it brings, you know, fog and confusion and darkness into your life. So the clouds is about problem, haziness and feeling foggy or clouded. Uh, it can be also a stormy, cloudy weather, both literal and fig figurative. It's also here we meet another king, which is the king of clubs. And the king of clubs is, is someone who is unpleasant, someone which is older and um, very much in his head. And often uh, this is, you know, your ex-husband or your ex-boyfriend, someone who really bring confusion into your life. For instance, if, if the clouds come up with the birds, you can be sure that there will be gossips going around and all these, you know, chatty uh, conversation will bring, you know, more of a burden than uh, a healing. 
the clouds with the fish for instance shows that your uh, finances are disastrous your transaction that you are thinking of doing is going to be uh, in the dark the lilies with the clouds also show that uh, people are unloyal people are not seeing your true virtue and perhaps you need to wait for the storm to be over so that you can enjoy the rainbow and the good weather uh, the only card that can neutralize the clouds is the sun card, card 31, as it is the only element that can peek through the clouds and bring, bring clarity and uh, knowledge to this situation. Card number 7 is the snake, and the snake is another negative card. You will find that in the Lenormand cards, the series of club are actually the most difficult cards in the game. So the snake is negative and it's another woman. It's uh, an enemy, a female rival. And uh, sometimes, often it is someone who is very bright intellectually and someone who actually um, is very clever. They can make you believe whatever they want they can manipulate you in many ways and when the snake appear in your reading it is an indication a sign to be cautious and to look around for any you know jealous person and someone with a very very sharp tongue so beware because the the snake is always there to harm okay and you won't want to have the snake by your side Card number eight is the coffin, and the coffin is actually a negative card. And having it in your game, it speaks about ending, about transformation, and it's about completion as well. Something is dead, definitely, in this question or in this situation. It can be also the representation of sickness, of shock, of feeling lost, feeling boxed in, and uh, in an, uh, representing an object, the coffin can be a, p a place of darkness, it can be uh, a drawer, it can be a box, it can be something that is confined. And um, an example of combination, sun with coffin, will tell you that after this ending, after this uh, transformation, something positive is going to, to, to come out of it. But having the coffin with the scythe can actually tell you that there is an ending, definite ending. And this is something sudden and unexpected. It can be death, it can be a death through surgery, it can be a death by accident, it can be also a tragedy. You know, someone taking his life as well can be a seen for this combination of card. Um, the coffin with the anchor actually tells you that the problem that you are in actually is going to last for a long time. And the anchor brings this heaviness into this uh, interpretation. The bouquet is a positive card. Actually, the bouquet is one of the cards that you would like to see when there is an invitation, uh, someone welcoming you. It can be a gift, a surprise, and also it is um, a pleasant and beautiful kind of woman as the queen of spades in this game. Uh, often the, the bouquet or the flowers would be a sign of a gift of some sort. It can be gift of flowers, it can be gift of perfume, it can be also you know an exchange, an attraction, an opening. There is many many meanings to the bouquet depending on uh, actually what your question is. Everything relates to your question. So uh, example of um, combination for the bouquet uh, bouquet plus a scythe, it can be the end of, of a pleasant moment or pleasant situation. 
the whip and the bouquet can mean that you're going to have a sexual relationship with a young and beautiful woman it can be also a sign of an opening that the person is very attracted there is passion the birds with the bouquet is going to speak about intimate conversation and if you are single you want to see the bouquet next to the ring because this is sign of a proposition this is sign of an engagement and also sign of a wedding Card number 10 is the scythe, and the scythe is a card of suddenness, of threat, of possible physical pain or injury. Uh, it is a negative card, but it depends on the context of your question. As a, a cutting object, it can ask you to take a decision to remove something, to severe something that doesn't serve you anymore. Uh, it can also be a sign of harvest, of gathering, of reaping the fruit of your labor. And in a love relationship, um, the person having the self can be someone who has the Peter Pan complex. The person doesn't want to take any responsibility. The person doesn't want to grow in any sort. They just want to play and have fun. So uh, when there is a separation, a divorce, a breakup, the scythe will be there, as I said, it's a cutting, it is a cutting object and it cuts over any ties, any uh, bound, anything that you share with someone. It's also a card of danger, so beware, beware when it comes to you and uh, you use with cautious, really, really use this card with cautious. The whip is another negative card um, because its energy is argumentative, it's heated conversation, it's, you know, always complaining and it's, it is something which is repetitive, okay? So visualize someone being whipped. It's, you know, uh, um, a repetitive movement, it's pain, it's punishing, it's also being punished. It's uh, also the card for, for, for me in the Lenormand reading, the whip is the card that represents sex because of its uh, heat, repetitive motion, and in French we call um, uh, the whip la verge, and uh, a, tr a literal translation will be the penis in English. So this is why many readers like me attribute uh, the whip to be the card of sex. Here comes the birds, card number 12. So the birds is about communication, it's about gossip, it's about someone's voice. And the card is actually a neutral card. It depends on um, what card is around it, okay? And um, in ancient deck or German deck, there the birds are represented by owls. And owls are actually represented as all souls. And um, this is why in many uh, system of normal reading, the birds are seen as an old couple or old person because of the owl in the game. So for me, in my, uh, in my technique of reading the normal, the birds is about verbal communication, about voice messages and phone calls. It's about chatter anxious talking, speaking, sometimes gossip or energized dialogue. It is also things in pair. It can be siblings and it can be, like I said, an old couple. So depending on what is around the bird, it will be influenced. For instance, with the sun, the conversation is bright and smart. With the snake, it is gossip. It is, you know, stabbing people in the back it's programming some sort of threat or some sort of uh, difficulties okay with the stars the conversation expands you know in a good way with the clouds the conversation is confusing is heavy and we are going nowhere the child called number 13 is the jack of spade and uh, 
it is sign of new beginnings and uh, of something new, something young, something small in size. It can be small amount as well. It represents also a child, a grandchild or a childlike tendency. Uh, when the child come up, it's the card of innocence, you know. It's like a plain, a, a, a plain canvas is given to you. And you can choose whatever you want to create with the child, okay. And uh, in certain, depending on, again on the context of your question, the child is actually positive. I see it as positive to neutral because it is influenced by uh, over cards. But it's always uh, a joy and um, a good sign to have the child in your game. Okay, so here comes uh, Mr. Fox. So Mr. Fox is someone who is very clever. He, it is someone who is undercover, someone who is manipulative. Uh, if you know about the, um, uh, the, the story of the fox and the crow, you know that the fox is smart in telling exactly what you want to hear, okay? So the fox wears a false mask. It is someone who can wrong you in all sense. It is someone who is very intelligent. Sometimes he is a scam or a manipulator. Very cunning. And um, the fox is my work card. If you have a day job, if you're receiving a paycheck, the fox is the card that will represent your work. You will ask me why. So I believe that it comes from the Knight of Clubs, which is the work card in French cartomancy. And I believe that the French cartomancers had applied the meaning of work to the fox. Card number 15 is the bear. The bear is something really big and really strong. It is a neutral card because it is influenced by the card surrounding it again. And uh, the bear is the card that represents your boss. If you are an executive, a manager, CEO, someone of authority, uh, this is you, this is the bear. And um, the bear is, like I said, power, it's force, it's strength. It's also my money card in the Lenormand card, in, in Lenormand card reading. You will ask me why again. The thing is, the Ten of Clubs in French cartomancy is equal to money. And French cartomancy again has attributed the card of money to the bear. So with negative cards, the bear can be actually quite... Uh, um, danger, dangerous. He can be uh, like you know angry and overwhelmed by passion and the bear is a very protective mother. So you can apply this meaning as well in your reading. So this is one of my favorite cards in the Lenormand Oracle, the stars. The stars about lucidity, psychic development, about clairvoyance and also about your wishes. With a negative card, it can speak about wishful thinkings. Example of this combination can be the stars and the cloud. And it's also representing your high intention and your prayer, what you really want and what is your heart desire. And uh, the stars speak about things in large number. So, Whatever is close to the, to the stars is multiplied or reinforced, okay? With the key, for example, this is a great success. This is fame. This is you being recognized for who you are, being acknowledged by many. Another combination can be the moon and the stars. This is the best combination that you can get because here you're going to be famous. And people are is going to be attracted to your talent, to your ability, to your gifts, and you are going to live a wonderful time. Card number 17 is the stork, and the stork is about change, 
it's about a nice change actually because the the stroke ad upgrade it, it, it upgrades your situation and it's a very positive card to have so uh, when you want to have a promotion and advancement you want to see the stroke near your work card uh, the another meaning for the stroke is about relocation and travel um, being the queen of heart, it can be a nice woman, a woman with children, or a maternal figure. And uh, it's also an expected family addition. Not always a child, not always a pregnancy, it can be also adoption. But most of the time, it is about someone getting pregnant. So you really want to see the stock when it is about pregnancy, or it's about moving house good combination for the uh if you want to know if you move to this new house is good is the stork with uh the the stars showing that this is your dream destination the child at the stork gives uh more confirmation that really you are pregnant there is a child uh, coming forward the stork with the fish adds you know expansion and it brings your transaction and monetary um, transaction to a very high level. The dog is a positive card. The dog represents your friend, a good and reliable friend. Someone you can count on, someone you can trust, someone who is loyal, faithful, and it can also represent your pet. Okay, so this is one of the cards that represent the guardian angel. So if I want to know what the guardian angel has to say to the person when I'm giving a grand tableau reading or whatever spread I'm using, I will check where the dog is. And depending on the color that surrounds it, I will give a message. For instance, let's say the dog has the moon and the key. This is telling me that your guardian angels ask you to keep up the good work because soon you are going to be acknowledged for your work and there is success coming forward. Uh, and uh, if I get the, the clouds and the snake, I will tell the person that he should be cautious because someone who is close to him would want to harm him and put confusion in his life. So this is how you can get uh, an angel message from the Lenormand Oracle. The tower, card number 19, is about authority, about structure, about discipline. This is actually a, new, a neutral card again here. And uh, the tower represents a building, a government building, a big business it also speak about borders boundaries restriction self-rule isolation loneliness quiet work or literally a tall building or even a tower so um, when the person is next to the tower uh, it can mean that there is high position for him but more often this is another person is entrapped in loneliness and doesn't want to let anyone enter his life but if you have the tower with the tree this is a sign of longevity sign that you're going to have a happy and strong health and that nothing can put you down so um, in, another, in another question let's say that you ask uh, where will be my next location and you have the tower this is telling me that you're going to reside in a flat or a tall building. The garden is a positive card and uh, it talks about people in group, about public places, about site and location where people gather. It can be a fair, it can be a festival, it can be an event, a meeting, a party, entertainment, a little park or a garden so um, when you will be asking about your work and the garden comes up this can be actually a meeting that is announced uh, in a love relationship 
let's say you have the garden and the ring this is uh, an indication that there will be a wedding where you are going to assist and perhaps there you are going to make your soulmate the garden can also represent the internet the social media it's a community it can be YouTube you know where all people gather for the same intention it can be Facebook Twitter whatever social media um, that you you are on to and um, the garden actually also says that you're going to be introduced to a group of people where new friendship and new relationship would be born the mountain caught 21 is high tall and positive it is often a sign of obstacle and uh, it's actually uh, a negative card when the mountain appears, everything that you are doing is blocked there is a standstill so the basic uh, meaning for the mountain is the barriers obstacle delays and uphill and circuit circuitous climb uh, getting over and upper things so it's a very very heavy and difficult card nothing is lost but you really need to actually you know give energy and time and dedication for you to get out of this situation so the crossroad got 22 the crossroad is sign that uh, it's time for decision are you going to go to right or are you going to turn left so uh, this is a neutral card again here influenced by our surrounding card and this is about alternatives about choices decisions things in pair a turning point being at a crossroad and um, also it can show the path that you should take so for instance if you have the sun and the roads this is telling you that you're on the right track and that you are going to make the good decision and inversely if it's the roads and uh, the clouds okay so the roads and the key is also a successful decision the roads with uh, the fox it's about the decision concerning your work the roads with the bear is again here a decision about money and a monetary transaction and the roads and the book can say that your choice is not known or an unknown choice or you're not able to choose because some factors are hide so here is card number 23 and this is the mice the mice is a negative card because it talks about tension about loss about thief about something which is wearing down or wearing away it is a card of worry of illness of infection of small disease and it is for me the card that represents stress okay so the well-known meaning for the mice is you know something is taken away from you or something is misplaced and if you want to know where this item is just look at the mice and look at the card which surrounds it for instance if the coffin is there it will tell you that the item that you're looking for is in a drawer a box or a dark place uh, if the garden is near, it can tell you that the item that you're looking for is outdoor or in the garden or in a green area. With the ship, it can mean that the item is, is far away or in your own car. So, depending on the question that you're asking, the mice could be stress or it could be something that is taken from you. Here is card 24, the heart, one of the most positive cards in the deck. And the heart is about love and affection. It's about warm regard, sweetheart, friendship, playful flirtation, feeling of other heart, emotions, affairs, heart's desire, 
emotional young man because here we meet the jack of heart and this is the card that represents love for me so if your question is in regard to love and relationship you would like to look where the heart is and surrounded with positive card the heart could bring great joy to you for instance if the heart is with the sun it will tell about true feelings about warm feeling of love and successful relationship with the child it will mean a new love a young lover or a teenage crush with the store it will talk about love that gives you wings and a positive relationship card number 25 is the ring and the ring is a positive card it is a card that talks about contract about pact partnership engagement or long-term commitment it is also an ongoing loop a series of sequence a piece of jewelry or a ring a little ring as an as an object so depending on what card comes with the ring for instance with the stars this is telling you about promising marriage or a famous wedding with the scythe it will mean a divorce a breakup or a definite separation with the tree indeed it talks about a healthy marriage a grow a growing relationship so when your question comes to some sort of relationship or your couple or your wedding look at the ring and look what card surrounds it positive card is good with a negative card not that good and uh, if you are also asking about a partnership the ring can represent that too number 26 is the book and it is known as the book of secrets and uh, it talks about secrets classified information academic and higher education private study unrevealed knowledge publishing and writing and it can represent a literal book so uh, when the book comes in your reading uh, the main uh, meaning will be there is something unknown here or hidden or keeping secret and the card surrounding it can help you unlock the secret okay and uh, depending on its position the book can also talk about education like with the tower it will talk about high education with uh, the clover it can mean unexpected discovery or lucky information or a literal green book with the stars it can talk about astronomy exoteric study astrology a secret spreading out as well card number 27 is the letter and uh, the letter is a neutral card meaning that the surrounding card will impact its meaning for instance with a positive card as it is a card of the news and communication and correspondence it will come out with good messages but with a negative card this can tell you that there is trouble so the keywords for the letter are written messages correspondence information email faxes memos notes missives receipt tickets anything which is printed out or on paper so it can represent a piece of paper like with the, the ring it can uh, show a marriage certificate with the book it can be the result of an examination it can be a diploma or a certificate so here is together card number 28 the man and card number 29 the woman so these cards are very important because they are going to represent the people that you are giving the reading to if you are a man the main card will represent you as the querent and if you and the woman at that time will represent a significant woman your spouse a sister a partner or something someone who is really close to you a feminine uh, figure and inversely if you are a woman the woman will represent you and the man will represent your husband your father 
or any significant person, uh, male figure in your life. Understand that this card doesn't have meaning uh, with themselves, but each and every card of the game to its closeness or presence in the spread will impact directly these two cards. So these two cards are the players, the actors of the game. Card number 30 is the lilies. And the lilies is about uh, patience. It's a neutral card. And the core meaning is patience, it's virginity, it's tranquility and peace. As a person, this will be a strict and major man. He can be a patriarch. Uh, some people, uh, particularly the German uh, card readers, will say that the lilies represent sex. In, uh, uh, in their reading, it's the sex card. But in the French tradition, the only aspect of sex in this card is virginity. The lilies is representation of virginity, and it's also the representation of the French monarchy, uh, la fleur de lys. So depending on what school you are uh, learning the meaning from, the lilies can be a sex card, or it can be like I use it as a card of patience, of tranquility, of virginity. The, the Sun is one of the most positive cards in the game, and uh, it is number 31. And the Sun talks about success, about the morning, the daylight, happiness, heat, fire, warmth, electricity, brilliance, power, energy, vibrancy, sunny day, and summer. So let's take uh, some example of combination with the Sun, which is very positive. And remember that it's the only card that can uh, fight against the cloud. It can peek its light through the clouds and remove its negative uh, influence. So um, let's say with the rider, the sun will be good news, a wonderful visit, a fast movement. With the crossroad, it is about a good decision. You are divinely guided. It's a positive direction. With the dog, you, you are in front of trusted friends, a radiant friend, and your best friend as well. With the child, it will be a new beginning. With the whip, it can be a competition or pleasant sex. With the bouquet, it is a shiny gift. It is happiness and joy, and it is a very powerful combination. So card number 32 is the moon. And the moon is about fame and public recognition. It's about success in creative outlets. It's about romance, soul tending. Natural cycles as well are part of the meaning of the moon. Uh, actually, I see the moon as very positive, again, if the clouds are away. And um, some example of combination of the moon is uh, with the ship, a romantic trip, a creative journey, with the snake, known as being manipulative and envious, this is the reputation of the person you're questioning about, with the stars, great combination because these are the luminaries, and um, it talks about fame and recognition and a dream come true. With the crossroad, it is creative choices, intuitive decisions, with the mice, it's a loss of recognition and insecurity and great anxiety. A great card to have in your reading is, for, is card 33, which is the key. The key is about sureness, about complete control, about expertise, about skill and talent, uh, a success, and a straight yes answer. Okay, so when you have the key in your hand, whatever you want to achieve is a success. It's one of the powerful cards in the game, including the Sun. And some uh, combination of the cards could be mount with the mountain. It's a major block and important delays, and to be patient here. With the stork, it's a positive change, a successful move. With the whip, it's an important conflict an argument 
with the house. It can be house case, important family, and a significant house. So remember that the key can point the answer to your question. So look what card is just next after the key because this will reveal an important answer or an important piece of wisdom. Card number 34 is the fish and the fish is a very positive card. So the fish is about transaction, it's about money, finances, cash flow, prosperity and abundance. Uh, it's also deep investment and uh, here we meet the king of diamonds who is a sensitive and compassionate businessman. Uh, the fish can relate to liquids, to the waters and sometimes to alcohol and as well as the aquatic life. So some example of the fish in combination will be uh, with the writer, financial news, a salesman, a new transaction, with uh, the scythe and end of a transaction, a business decision, a cut in finance, uh, with the bear, a big investment, a large purchase, a wealthy boss. Card 35 is the anchor, and the anchor is a very powerful card and very positive card as it talks about dropping your anchor, committing to work, stability and responsibility and security. It's creating a safe harbor, retreating to a place of depth. With the anchor, you have the assurance of being safe, of being secure, and you know, nothing can really happen to you. And it is a card also that represents hope. Okay, so some example of combination with the anchor uh, would be with the rider, it's a safe visit, a new goal, with the stork, it's a steady change, settling elsewhere, uh, with the garden, it's a safe group, or working with the public, with the mountain, it is going nowhere, being stuck, huge obstacle, quite negative, with um, the lilies, it's, you know, someone that you can trust, someone who is loyal. And with the sun, it is a successful job attaining your goal and a card of protection. So we reach the last card of the Lunar Mall Oracle, and this is the, the cross. So the cross is negative because uh, it brings, you know, a burden and heaviness and um, quite difficult situation to deal with. It's a card of suffering, of grief, and it's a card of destiny, challenge. Uh, it can be also test and beliefs and also about religion because the cross can stand for um, Christianity as well. So depending on what school you are at, the cross can mean two things. If you are uh, in the Portuguese or Brazilian school, they uh, tend to see the cross as something positive because the cross represents Christianity, represents Christ energy, and it represents the divine. But in other schools, like the French one, the cross actually, you know, look at the crucifixion, you know, aspect of the cross, where there is a lot of burden, a lot of challenges, and also it's a test of faith, okay? And you just need to choose what school you want to apply to this card. We've reached the end of this uh, video for the Lenormand meaning. And this is a very important part. I want to put, um, to emphasize on that because you really, really need to get the meaning before you can move to card combination and then to small spread and then to bigger spread. If you don't have the basic, the basics you will not get the technique so start by this video and I invite you to listen to it quite often and also you can add actually uh, some of your own meaning so what I like to actually I'm going to give you some advice some final advice on the Lenormo and I'm going to read that from my book okay so 
the first thing when you are attempting to uh, do a Norman Court reading is to buy yourself a good deck. You know, choosing a good deck is very important and it's the very first step. Use a deck that is clear and cluttered with basic symbols and this is the deck that will work, you know, the best for you, okay? I have designed uh, some deck for beginners. You can check that on my website, angelcartomancy.com. You have the words, which is printed on them, the keywords, and it makes, you know, apprenticeship so, so, so easy. And then after being able to retain the meaning, you can move to more fancy deck. Second part, which is very important as well, is consistency. So I invite you to choose at least two meanings for each card and stick to it. You know, what I mean here is like, you know, if you choose the bouquet to represent gift and the whip to represent sex, stick to it no matter what, okay? So choose at least two meanings and depending on the context, you will apply the meaning which, is, which seems to be more relevant. And, you know, I also advise you to keep a special notebook where you will write your own repertoire of meaning. As you do readings, you will see that you will have a personal relationship with the cards. For instance, I know when I see um, the, the clover that I am going to actually, you know, meet an Irish or someone from Ireland I will have a, you know, a relationship or work relationship or a visit or myself visiting this beautiful country. So you will have your own relationship with the cards as well. And also you must decide what you want the cards to tell you. What I mean by that is uh, before you frame your question, you must decide what you want the cards to tell you. Is it an advice? Is it simply a prediction? Because, you know, the two are very different. So be really, really precise about this. And the fourth thing is to frame your question. Knowing that clear question equals clear answer. So you formulate your question as clear as possible. And sometimes you will see that, oh my, the answer that the course are giving me, you know, is not accurate. So what I advise you is to go back to your question. This is very important because it's not the card that is wrong. It's the way that you had pronounced your question. You may have thought it differently and phrase it in a different way. So go back to your question and, you know, and uh, correct whatever you have to correct and then try to do another spread. Uh, the last thing is journaling. Keeping a record of your reading is very useful. Uh, you can keep track on how a certain card have a particular meaning and in what situation this card had happened to appear and I you know for my part I really enjoy working through these old notebooks and to see how the reading had applied to a certain situation and learn more from that and let me tell you a secret my notebooks had turned to be this beautiful book of the art of the normal card reading so it's never in vain that you do something with the Lenormand Oracle so till next time, I send you love, light and blessing and please, I invite you to subscribe to the channel, to leave a comment if you had learned something interesting or new and also share, share this video with everyone you know who is passionate and want to start to uh, practice the normal. Have a nice day.